Hello citizens, this is Rahat from Buttfix and welcome to my game review show, Game Talk. Today I'm gonna talk about Hitman 3's new roguelike game mode, Freelancer. Impressive! A review code was provided to me by IO Interactive, but the views expressed here are my unbiased, honest opinion. I've spoken as honestly as I can. All three games of the modern Hitman trilogy are now bundled together under the title World of Assassination. Although it's still called Hitman 3 on Steam for some reason, Hitman Freelancer is the new game mode that also comes bundled with this package for free. In this mode, you basically get to kill newer targets and locations from the main games to earn money and build your base. Now we're talking. But before we dig deep, here's a short introduction to Hitman for those who never played it. <laughs> In Hitman, you play as a bald, barcoded assassin who travels around the world, assassinating one or more targets in each of his assignments. Killing things clears my head. These targets are found in huge, highly detailed levels located in different parts of the world. There, they go about their daily activities, which you get to intercept by utilizing a great number of opportunities available all around you. Both targets down. Impressive. Your parents must be very proud. To aid in your mission, apart from guns, mythical flutes, hammers, crowbars, wrenches, bricks, shovels, screwdrivers, robotic arms, rotten fish, and many, many non-traditional weapon options are at your disposal. It doesn't take a lot of brains to ambush somebody from behind. Although the game is primarily designed to have you poison someone's food, set multi-layer traps, or execute complex strategies to kill your targets dramatically without getting caught. You never saw it coming. You can also kill pretty much every NPC and steal their clothes for yourself. Wearing these clothes gives you access to restricted areas, which helps you get close to your targets. It's all about appearances. Even in places like Mumbai, India, you can kill a brown guy and put on his ultra traditional looking clothes and still no one would wonder why a white guy is wearing these daisy clothes and holding a gun. Of course, it was so obvious. Now about Freelancer, this new free game mode gives you a safe house where you can store your guns and other items and pick out types of crime syndicates that you want to eliminate. Once you pick a syndicate, you must eliminate the lower tier members first and then in final missions called Showdown, you get to kill the big shots. Once a syndicate is destroyed, you pick another one and keep killing targets in progressively more difficult levels. You wanna challenge me? But the caveat is, you must remain undefeated throughout the campaign. Oh man, there's always a catch! It means if you fail your mission to kill a lower tier target, the other targets of the syndicate will get alerted and the levels would become more difficult. But once you reach the final showdown mission for a given syndicate, if you fail or get killed, you lose all of your guns and gadgets and half of the money you earned so far. Oh, fine, fine. <laughs> I mean, it's only money, isn't it? <laughs> Moreover, if you eliminate a whole syndicate by succeeding in a showdown mission and then fail the first mission for the next syndicate, then you fail the whole campaign and basically have to start all over again. Fuck! <laughs> this roguelike design makes this mode pretty tough which is why if you haven't mastered each and every level from the main games and aren't familiar with the many traps and opportunities available in them, let's be honest, you're probably not gonna make much progress in this freelancer mode. No chance in hell. After you complete each mission or complete some of the optional objectives that come with them, you earn Mercers, which is basically money that lets you buy weapons and gadgets. Besides these Mercers, after completing or even failing a mission, you earn different amounts of XP, which helps you unlock mastery levels, which in turn unlocks newer areas in your safe house. Once these areas are unlocked, you can add different elements to basically make your safe house look good. Like that's something to brag about! For example, at the very beginning, you don't have access to your bathroom. Cock torture! Which means you can't poop before you complete the first few missions. I'm willing to take that risk. But once you complete a handful of missions, one of the first things that unlock is your bathroom, which unfortunately has a very dirty sink and a medieval bathtub. Besides aesthetics, these unlockables don't really have any practical value. They don't seem to help you complete the assassination missions in any way. So if you're like me who doesn't really care all that much about cosmetic items in video games, I guess you won't be very motivated to complete these missions to win these unlockables. Which means you want absolutely nothing. 
Gameplay wise, this mode is identical to the main games, except your targets are now just random people. In the main games, usually the targets are some kind of big shots who always have guards surrounding them. But the targets in these freelancer missions can be pretty much anyone, even one of those guards themselves. I think this randomization diminishes the enjoyment of the game dramatically because in the main game's handmade missions, your targets have elaborate routines which you can observe and through trial and error, find perfect ways to kill them with style. It's a little thing called style. Look it up sometime. But these freelancer randos don't really have events or specific traps surrounding them, so the potential to create theatrical assassinations are close to none. Especially since there's no save system and one death can eradicate all your progress, killing the targets as quickly as possible just to survive the mission and move to the next target often takes priority. Well, that's just not good enough. So in some missions, you can simply kill your target in front of a crowd and before the guards can even react, you can quickly run to the exit to quote unquote complete the mission. Nobody panics. Of course, you can always go to the mega mayhem route and gun down everyone without prejudice. In that case, the fear and tension that the main games create often become absent from some of these freelancer missions. This is a game played with fear. Sure, you can go mega mayhem in the main game missions as well, but the existence of different mission stories and various entrapment opportunities, which let you kill the same target in multiple ways, strongly discourage the player from going mega mayhem, which the freelancer missions don't exactly do. It's a damn shame! You're given bonus objectives in every mission, like poisoning a target, not changing your disguise more than once, etc. Even some of these bonus objectives literally ask you to kill the guards with SMGs, shotguns or unsilenced pistols, which again encourages mega mayhem. In my opinion, Hitman is fundamentally not designed for mega mayhem. Gretchen. Stop trying to make mega mayhem happen. It's not going to happen. Which is why asking you to cause mega I mean, to use this method to get bonus points seems kind of counterintuitive to me. That's what makes it so nasty. But if you're lucky, in some missions where randomness does not get in the way, you can have a fun experience in this mode like the main games. For example, in this mission that takes place inside a bank in New York, I could see that my target is located on the second floor. Or maybe that's the third floor, um, I don't know. But of course, the guards won't let me go there. So I walked to the receptionist to find her having a conversation with a colleague about a guy that came to interview for a job. She mentions that he went to the washroom a while ago but hasn't come out yet. It's been there for ages. So I go straight to the washroom to find it occupied, then I kind of break into this other room beside it, only to find out through this glory hole that the interviewee is probably pregnant. So I overflow the sink to distract the nearby janitor, steal his crowbar and use it to break into the guy's booth and then I steal his clothes, dump his body and go back to the receptionist who conveniently doesn't notice that I'm bald and takes me straight to the interview. I feel like a new man. I'm ready. I answer as honestly as I can during the Rorschach test based interview and immediately manage to get the job which grants me permission to enter the top floor to screw my target with a screwdriver. <laughs> there are many similar opportunities available in each map. And this Blake character. He's out here now, ringing doorbells. Sure is. Why did you ask? No reason. Which allow you to kill your target and complete at least some of the optional objectives. Although, like I mentioned, not all missions allow you to utilize them effectively, which results in quality of gameplay experience varying vastly from mission to mission. Well, that is unfortunate. If you haven't played the modern Hitman trilogy before, or if you played the first two but haven't gotten around to the third one yet, then without a doubt, this package is worth every penny. You enjoy the game. As a whole, this trilogy is amazing, and due to the sheer number of ways available to kill each target, the replay value of the missions is pretty great. And I like it! Even if you suck at it, the freelancer mode would certainly keep you entertained for a few hours. I'd like to keep playing it but because of its kind of dull mission design and mostly meaningless reward system, I wouldn't have suggested buying the game only to play this mode. But since it is free, there's no reason not to try it out yourself. Especially those of you who are experts in the main games might in fact appreciate this extra challenging mode way more than I did. Probably because I suck at it. You suck! Woo!
If you like this video, please subscribe to Buckfix, follow me on my fake profile on Facebook, and support the channel through Patreon. Links are in the description. Yeah.